You are looking live at four different cities, Chicago, Seattle, Los Angeles, and Washington, D.C., just four of the many who are hosting a gun reform rally uh, this afternoon. In fact, the crowds continue to grow. One of the arguments that we're hearing from a number of lawmakers and others is that the role of mental health is a big predictor for po the possibility of a mass shooting. I want to bring in Dr. Jonathan Metzl, psych uh, psychiatry professor at Vanderbilt University. And, and doctor, thank you so much for joining us. You've been fairly outspoken. So you know, we heard the president talk a little bit about this after almost every shooting that we've had in, in the past year. What is your reaction when you hear that from both lawmakers um, and also just advocates on the issue? Well, people in my profession of psychiatry want to help address this problem as much as possible. But one thing I think you're seeing us do is push back quite forcefully on this simplistic notion that some kind of mental illness diagnosis would have predicted a mass shooting. And I say that for a couple of reasons. One is that there is no psychiatric diagnosis whose symptom is shooting somebody else or harming somebody else. So there's no predictive value of psychiatric diagnosis in that regard. And the second aspect is that it's incredibly stigmatizing, this idea that people with mental illness are ticking time bombs. Now, it's certainly the case that there are complex histories of many mm -hmm. mass shooters, but what we see from mass shooters is that a, a number of factors go, are at play, everything from gender, race, access to firearms, and so narrowing it down just to mental illness is something that I think you're going to get a lot of push, right. pushback on from the mental health e community. Um, we only have about a minute left, and so I, sure. I want to get this in. You've said politicians use the mental health argument as a shield, but I'm curious as to why that definition you find so dangerous. Well, I, I, again, as I say, I, on one hand, I think it's very stigmatizing, this idea that people with mental illness are ticking time bombs. And the other aspect is that there's simply no mass shooter diagnosis, right? There's no idea that uh, we have some kind of magic idea about which one of the many factors that go into mass shootings uh, isolate down to mental illness. And so in that sense, what I argue in my work is that psychiatric expertise is really a prevention issue. How can we, how can we prevent high-risk communities from getting guns rather than putting psychiatrists in a really false position of having to predict which one of the many, many people who fit the profile of mass shooters are going to go on to commit a horrific crime. And, and, and uh, like I said, we only have about 15 seconds, but I do want to get, you know, your take on a solution. You've been traveling across the country. What have you been hearing from folks and are they receptive to the points that you bring up? I think, we're, I think right now we're at a point, look at these amazing people in the streets, we're at a point where we want complex narratives. And so I think in that regard, we're pushing back on simplistic, uh, simplistic assumptions. And I do think we're ready for a more nuanced position. And I think psychiatry is an important part of the conversation, but not one where we should be at the front lines of predicting who's going to go on to commit a mass shooting. Well, and I do have a congressional study that was taking place in 2015 that said less than 5% of gun-related killings in the U.S. Um, are gun related and it brought up mental health in that study. So, and people with mental illness are victims, more, much more likely to be victims than perpetrators of gun crime, also. So, that's important to remember. I wish we had more time. Doctor, thank you so much. It was fascinating your me. work, and we appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much.